Welcome everyone to the QMS Transcelerate QMS webinar. Greetings to everyone from around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Just to let everyone know, the slides will be made available uh, after the webinar, so no need to, to, uh, to worry about that. I'd like to introduce the Transcelerate team that has made this webinar possible for you today. I am Jean Spicero, the Program Director and Interim Regulatory Council Advisor working with the QMS Workstream. Gloria McHugh is the Project Manager and the Webinar Moderator. And Jennifer Sun is the Webinar Operations Lead and Project Manager for Value and Impact. If you have any feedback or technical issues during the webinar, please contact events at TranceleratebiopharmaInc.com. I'd like to introduce our panelists today. We have Heather Macy, who's the Senior Director at Pfizer in Innovative Health Medical Quality Assurance. She is the QS QMS team member. Sarab Suleiman is a Process Optimization Management at Clinical Quality and Continuous Improvement at Sanofi, and she is also a QMS team member. Dawn Ludine Lundin is the Strategy and Business Operations Group at Merck Research Labs. Quality Assurance at Merck, and she is also a QMS team member. Each one will conduct a, a specific section of the webinar and answer any questions associated with that section as they are submitted. We will also be uh, answering any pre-submitted questions as well as answering the live questions as you submit them through the chat bar. Logistics for the webinar. All participants will be muted for this call. For audio, Please connect to audio to listen to presentations via your computer or your phone. Details for how to do so are demonstrated here on the right. You can either hit the computer audio or your phone audio to listen. You can reduce the control panel for a better view of presentations. And to submit your questions to the presenters, type your question in the questions panel and then click send. Logistics for the live polling. We're really interested in getting your feedback and to make this session more interactive and facilitate sharing of useful information. We will conduct live polls throughout your session. Your participation is completely voluntary and all responses will be anonymized. Answers will be shared only as percentages of respondents. When the blue poll, blue poll question appears, enter your response and submit. Just some basic ground rules to make sure that we can cover all of this very important material and to, to acknowledge the interest and value of the work um, of this dedica dedicated team of QMS experts. We want to make this discussion helpful and answer as many of your questions. Participation, again, is voluntary, as is using any of Transcelerate's assets and tools. You don't have to identify what company you work for. Things that we would ask you not to discuss are what vendors you may be working with, sites or CROs you are using or not using. Any issues that you may have with any vendors, sites or CROs are not a topic for discussion, you, nor are your long-term development plans or anything related to costs. We also can't answer questions about vendors, costs of using, implementing, and, or implementing Transcelerate assets or tools, or which member companies may be using the assets or tools. Our agenda will cover an introduction to QMS, the QMS Workstream and its solutions, the QMS foundational aspects and elements, a demonstration of the assessing a QMS tool and discussion, and all QMS solutions available. We will complete the webinar with a Q&A and survey. I'd like to now turn our uh, presentation over to Heather Macy for her introduction to the Workstream and solutions. Great, thank you so much, Jean. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today. I am Heather Macy from Pfizer, and we would like to start this meeting with an anonymous polling question. So the question is, how aware of the Transcelerate QMS manuscript and solutions are you? Either not aware, somewhat aware, or very aware? We'll give it a moment.
All right, great feedback. So we have 40% who are not aware, 49% who are somewhat aware, and 11% who are very aware. So a great mix today, and uh, we invite your questions and comments. All right, so with that, although there has been advancement in quality management principles relative to clinical development, including GMPs, GCP publications, and more recently, ICH E6 revision two within clinical development, there remains a lack of comprehensive harmonized guidance and regulatory expectations for building and sustaining fundamental components of a clinical quality management system, which leads us to desperate implementation and inefficiencies. Next slide. We would like to share with you the extensive work undertaken and completed relative to guidance and tools created by the efforts of Transcelerate's clinical QMS workstream. ICHE 6 revision two opens the door to many questions on what is a quality management system and how we might implement section five, which beyond risk management addresses process, training, procedures, and issue management. The Transcelerate paper can help support this bridge, and it provides guidance on a clinical quality management system framework. It allows for a consistent, streamlined, and proactive quality approach throughout all stages of clinical research and development. Next slide. So a clinical QMS is an integrated framework through which organizations systematically define quality objectives linked to their broader strategic goals. More specifically, the purpose of a clinical QMS is to achieve company objectives with quality and efficiency, reduce quality-related issues, increase confidence in the results of clinical research, and integrate trial level risk management activities to provide a broader view of whether objectives are being met and subject safety and data quality are being appropriately addressed enterprise wide. Next slide. So this slide depicts the elements of the Transcelerate QMS conceptual framework in addition to the foundations just discussed. These reflect areas that have been reported to contribute to success in the clinical arena. Seven of these, the horizontal bars, are elements that integrate quality into clinical development. The other two, which are assessing the CQMS and management review, provide for ongoing monitoring of the achievement of quality objectives and the health of the QMS itself. Although risk management is a specific element, you will notice the concept of risk enabled decision making throughout the document. For example, in understanding the risk posed by various partnerships prospectively or in creating or modifying procedural documents only as necessary to address customer requirements and risk to quality. This reflects both interview, dialogue, and the modernization of a foundational QMS standard, ISO 9001, a revised 9001, ISO 9001 document describing proactive risk management and risk-based thinking will be issued later this year. Next slide. Thank you. So five of the nine elements have been further defined by the Transcelerate CQMS workstream with supported flexible tools created for use. We of course have the conceptual paper and manuscript with supportive tools. 
the element of issue management was published as a manuscript in July 2016 and supportive tools were made available by August 2017. The element of knowledge management also has an associated manuscript as well as supportive tools. The element of assessing the CQMS has an associated tool and is the focus of our demonstration today. The risk management element has a draft manuscript and supportive tools, both of which will be available later this year. And lastly, the element of processes will also have a manuscript and tools for your use before year end. We are very pleased to share that there have been over 14,000 downloads of this information to date and encourage you to access the Transcelerate CQMS uh, site and associated materials. So the potential benefits from this work, Transcelerate CQMS framework are many. The first is flexibility. It is a proposed framework which can be modified to align with your company's approach to establishing its CQMS. It promotes consistency, providing a framework which allows for identification of errors that matter. As well, it has brought together sponsors to collaborate and solve repetitive quality issues, moving from a reactive to a proactive state. It also improves the image and credibility of medical research through a tangible way to improve patient safety, data integrity, and reliability. And lastly, by leveraging the Transcelerate CQMS from framework, patients and consumers will gain the outcome of safe and effective drugs to market faster. So I will pause here for questions. Hi, Heather. It's Gloria McHugh. Can you hear me? I can. Heather, there were several questions that were submitted around the different types of organizations that um, would be appropriate for um, implementing a clinical QMS, particularly around uh, when sponsors engage a CRO or an academic research organization. Um, there's a specific question about should CROs implement QMS independently and also about um, specific geographies implementing the clinical QMS. So I think those are sort of lumped together as the type of organizations or geographies implementing. Okay, great. Great questions, Gloria. Thank you. So the QMS tools and solutions are designed to be flexible and be applied worldwide regardless of the region or how far advanced the quality system may be. So by assessing an organization's CQMS, any organization, big or small, can identify areas of risk that are most relevant to their business and then prioritize areas on which to focus or improve. By following the recommendations for external partnering, sponsors and all of their partners, including CROs, can take a proactive measure and measures to collectively ensure quality. So just remember, quality agreement should define expectations to ensure quality management. Thank you, Heather. I think we can go on to the next speaker now, Sarab. Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Sarab Solomon. I'm from Sanofi um, Aventis. In this uh, section of the webinar, uh, I will be um, uh, going over the foundational aspects and the um, elements of the CQMS framework as proposed by Transcelerate. Um, and uh, I will explain uh, each foundational aspect and element, uh, the value it adds to the organization, and give you some uh, practical examples. Starting with the um, starting with the first one, go back one. Yes, please. Thank you. Understanding the context uh, is basically uh, that is understanding the environment in which your organization um, operates, including all the internal and external factors 
that impact you. Examples of internal factors could be uh, things like your organizational resources or uh, portfolio. Uh, external factors could be changes in your um, in your environment, a regulatory environment. Um, the value this adds to the organization is that it helps you design a QMS uh, that is fit for your purpose uh, as an organization based on your context. And it will highlight um, uh, the uh, organization's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and um, threats. Uh, to give you an example of this, uh, an organization did an external uh, survey uh, with its customers, both patients and sites, uh, to look at their needs. And the survey identified uh, uh, customer needs around uh, requirements of using more social media and clinical development. An evaluation of this feedback was performed by the organization, uh, and they identified which QMS elements could be optimized to support this new innovation. Next slide. Uh, leadership commitment basically means uh, uh, setting uh, clear quality standards throughout the organization and really clarifying the expectations on how to meet those standards. Uh, it's being able to lead by example to demonstrate that commitment. This really promotes um, a culture of uh, quality in the organization, which can be uh, uh, eventually uh, witnessed through employee engagement and pride, improved organization and uh, repeat organization reputation and the achievement of business goals. An example of this could be um, organizations that actually create um, a quality credo, which, uh, 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 which captures the quality vision for the organization and the standards. And having leaders in place that actually use the credo in their day-to-day -day interactions with the employees and in their activities and in their decision making. Next slide. Organizational commitment to quality basically uh, means uh, ensuring that all levels um, of people within the organization are committed to quality and that there is a sense of ownership uh, to feel empowered and to drive uh, quality in the day-to-day -day activities and in the decision making. Uh, this helps to drive quality as an integral part of the organizational culture. It avoids um, rework and errors by building quality into the daily activities. And it really promotes the concept that quality is owned by everyone and not just the uh, quality uh, assurance group in your organization. To illustrate this with an example, um, here are some questions um, in the uh, uh, right-hand side box. Uh, which, if you can answer yes to, this uh, would give you a good sense uh, that uh, you have um, good commitment to quality within your organization, uh, such as, am I empowered uh, to make decisions uh, to ensure quality in my work? Uh, or also, my colleagues and I frequently uh, are involved in, um, uh, in activities to create and enhance quality performance. Next slide. Continual improvement of the framework, this is an intentional approach to enhance and evolve both the efficiency and the effectiveness of your framework. Uh, this really helps you adjust and make any changes that are needed to the framework based on changes in your context, uh, both the internal and external factors we talked about earlier. This allows for recognition of potential positive changes within the organization that can enhance your framework. And most importantly, it really helps to ensure a, a nimble QMS that keeps pace with the evolving clinical development environment. A good example of this is an organization that piloted an e-consent approach. And when they did an evaluation of the pilot, they identified unrealized opportunities to streamline more the monitoring of informed consent forms. Next slide. Now we're going to talk about the seven. Uh, we talked about the four foundational aspects. Now we're going to cover the seven uh, elements, uh, starting with the first one on the next slide, processes. Um, I want to draw your attention to one thing on uh, some of my slides. If you look at the right-hand corner, the upper right-hand corner, you see the graphic for tools. Uh, just to let you know that any slide with that graphic means we actually have associated tools with this element that are available on the Transcelerate website. We will be talking a little bit more in depth um, on tools later on in the webinar, but just wanted to draw your attention to that graphic. So uh, processes really meaning, means an understanding of the steps an organization carries out to complete a clinical development activity. 
It also means determining whether you need to document those processes, which ones you need to document, and to what degree you're going to document those processes. And then the third aspect is really making sure you have an effective learning and training strategy to ensure uh, that you enable your staff to carry out and use those processes. This helps focus organizations on end-to-end -end clinical development processes uh, and provide greater assurance that you are meeting your uh, customer requirements. It helps you come up with the best documentation strategy that is commensurate with the level of risk for your processes. And it also helps you identify the, the, the appropriate learning strategy for your staff. Uh, a good example, I have a few examples on the right-hand side. I will focus on example number two, uh, a company that used risk-based methodology to basically um, uh, evaluate some of their critical processes. And based on that assessment, they uh, uh, streamlined the documentation needed per process to uh, ensure the highest level of compliance. Next slide. Looking at roles and responsibilities, uh, this really means ensuring appropriate resources, both in material and in people, are in the right place to achieve your clinical strategy and quality goals. For staff, it also means we're assessing our skill sets, we're defining roles and responsibilities and accountabilities that are associated with each role. This really helps to minimize the potential for activities to be duplicated and sometimes omitted altogether because of the lack of understanding of staff of their responsibilities. It also helps you to anticipate resource and expertise needs. An example of this is um, basically a, a new risk-based process that was designed um, in an organization. And this new process design requires the organization to really do an intentional review of their resources and redirect some of them based on that evaluation, identifying new skill sets that they needed for this new process. And they also identified um, prospectively the need for de the development of some IT-related tools. Next slide. The next one is partnering. Basically, partnering is those strategic relationships we have with external um, uh, partners such as vendors, sites, and co-development partners, um, and really ensuring that everyone in this partnership and in those strategic relationships uh, understands uh, their roles and responsibility, their accountabilities, and takes ownership for the quality of their deliverables. Uh, this facilitates and optimizes clinical development collaborations and ensures that we have effective and successful partnerships with uh, with our partners um, based on open communication, mutual understanding of the roles and responsibilities as well as the risks. A good example of this is a company that worked with, um, uh, with a, a, a vendor and upfront uh, they identified uh, all the requirements um, uh, and, and the criteria and pathways for issue escalation. This common understanding allowed for uh, timely escalation of the issues that mattered. It clarified who needed to be uh, uh, notified uh, and what were the expected actions. This saved everyone in this relationship time uh, because uh, we ensured clinical information was shared appropriately in a timely manner and with the right people. Next slide. Next slide, please. Issue management is a framework for identifying and managing issues that impact um, uh, human subject protection, rights and well-being of, uh, of the human subjects, regulatory compliance, reliability of study results, and uh, um, the public trust in the organization. Uh, framework for issue management should also identify the level of tolerance for issues, assign significance to the issues, and also differentiate between issues that matter and issues that are not significant. This provides end-to-end -end management of issues and support the effective implementation of a CAPA program that is commensurate with the level of impact of those issues. It also helps organizations focus their resources on uh, what is very important uh, in our environment, which is clinical development, rather than focusing resources on issue uh, resolution and troubleshooting. Uh, an example of this is a company that was looking at an isolated um, issue and by gathering um, information, an isolated issue that they deemed to be uh, not so significant. However, by gathering information from various sources, uh, from different sites involved um, in the trial, for example, they found that looking at the issue in aggregate um, in this manner 
uh, revealed that the issue actually was an issue that was significant and needed uh, a more in-depth evaluation, investigation, root cause analysis, impact assessment, and a, and a CAPA put in place. Next slide. Knowledge management connects people to knowledge and people to each other to leverage the existing content and knowledge and experience within the organization. It's an approach for capturing, sharing, and applying information to improve organizational performance. It increases productivity and enhances decision-making because it allows employees to readily locate the information they need, whether that information is explicit or tacit. It also uh, helps organizations learn from their past and avoid making repeated mistakes. An example of this is a company uh, that did not have a systematic way to leverage protocol design lessons learned across uh, development programs. So they had multiple protocol amendments and delays, uh, which could have been avoided if Team A really knew what Team B knew. Uh, the organization took actions and they established a knowledge management strategy via communities of practice and subject matter expert networks, which enabled uh, uh, and promoted routine and effective knowledge seeking and sharing across teams. Next slide. Next slide is basically about documentation uh, uh, to support the achievement of quality um, of quality and quality goals. Uh, you know, any documentation we do is there really to substan substantiate the achievement of quality objectives. For example, when we document study activities or our CAFA effectiveness checks, uh, the level of documentation is. Um, uh, uh, should be commensurate with the level of risk and significance to achieve quality objectives. The idea is we don't want to over-document or under-document. By, by defining a documentation strategy, organizations can focus on the core activities and eliminate uh, non-value-added uh, documentation. This also facilitates, again, the demonstration that we've met quality objectives as an organization uh, via concise documentation that can be uh, readily available during a regulatory inspection. A good example of this is an organization that looked at the, uh, what's being filed in their TMF, and they conducted a gap analysis against the current monitoring plans. And the idea was to uh, create alignment between the expectations from the monitoring plan and with what was being filed in the TMF. Again, going back to the idea, we don't want to over or under document. Next slide. So now that we've gone over the seven um, elements, there are two additional elements that are the horizontal bars you see in the graphic on the right-hand side. And the, those, those two um, uh, elements that ensure oversight are assessing uh, the clinical QMS. And uh, in the latter part of this webinar, you're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna go over a tool that was developed by Transcelerate to help you assess your clinical QMS. But basically, assessing the QMS helps you assess how well the current and the future clinical QMS incorporates the concepts from the uh, Transcelerate concept paper on QMS. It provides objective evidence as to whether or not our QMS is working effectively. It provides insight into the maturity of the elements that we put in place and shed, it, it helps shed light on the ones that are not as mature so that we can focus effort and time to help bring them to the desired maturity level. An example of this is a company that did a gap analysis between uh, the concepts outlined in the concept paper by um, Transcelerate on QMS and their existing uh, framework for QMS. And uh, when they looked at the elements in their QMS in isolation, they found that they were working optimally. However, when they were looking at the entire system and how, it, how well it operated altogether as a gear system, with one element uh, being able to connect, communicate, and feed into the other elements, they actually identify opportunities for improvement there where they were able to enhance the links between the elements. For example, uh, having the elements of knowledge management feed into your issue management, which could feed also into your risk management. The next, um, the next element is basically management review. This is uh, a, a periodic review by management uh, to evaluate the outputs of the uh, QMS system. For example, looking at key risks and issues uh, to really gauge the overall performance of the clinical QMS and to make sure uh, whether we need to make any changes or adjustments to ensure our continued alignment with the organization strategy and priority. This provides an opportunity for management to identify support and communicate necessary changes. And it also allows management the opportunity to demonstrate their uh, uh, commitment uh, to uh, quality oversight. 
An example of this is um, a, a company uh, which uh, presented its leadership team uh, a presentation on uh, uh, risks for their um, core clinical processes. Uh, and through, uh, through this presentation, management was provided visibility, visibility into how risks were being managed, and it allowed management to support a decision they had to make to realign resources to mitigate the highest risk. Next slide. So this concludes our discussion on the foundational aspects and the elements. One last slide I wanted to discuss uh, before we conclude this part of the webinar is this slide, this table that we have, which demonstrates the high level of alignment between um, uh, 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 the updated language in ICHE 6 revision 2 and between the various uh, uh, QMS elements that I just described earlier. So you see in the, in the column on the left-hand side, that's the language uh, uh, from revision two of the guideline. The middle column tells you which elements from the CQMS framework correspond and aligns with that language. And the last column basically uh, 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 captures some of the tools available on the Transcelerate website that can either help you better understand that element or help you with the implementation. I am not going to go through the details of this table one by one in the interest of time, but just wanted to draw your attention that that's available um, uh, as part of the slides you will get. And again, it shows the high degree of alignment between the sequence elements and the um, ICH E6 revision too. With, um, Thank you, Sarah. Before I it over to, to Don, uh, Gloria, are there any questions from this section that we can address? Thank you, Sarah. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, before I get to a couple of the questions that have been submitted, um, it was brought to my attention that I think we may have skipped over the slide that covers risk management on slide 25. Yes. So if you wouldn't mind just covering that quickly, and then I can... Um, tell you what sure. the questions are. Sure, uh, basically risk management is a framework for uh, integrated management and oversight of risks ac across your clinical development program. It really helps to shift the mindset of the organization from the reactive to the proactive um, uh, by addressing issues, significant issues and events uh, proactively. Uh, you're decreasing the probability of such issues recurring. Uh, it also helps uh, to focus your resources on significant risks. And significant risks are the ones that could have a potential impact on um, uh, human subject protection, regulatory compliance, reliability of study results, and the public trust in your organization. Uh, an example of um, uh, on risk management uh, comes from an organization that was looking at a specific study and doing an evaluation of the risks for uh, that study. And uh, basically, uh, study-specific requirements and expectations were not clearly defined and communicated with one of the vendors they were using on that study. Um, when an in, a more in-depth evaluation was done, the team realized that the same vendor was used uh, and was providing services across a range of clinical development areas for the organization. So that study-specific risk that was identified that impacted one study quickly became a risk that impacted uh, different areas within, within clinical development, probably different programs, different studies. So it quickly became a risk, not only at the study level, but also at the R&D level. Great, thank you very much, Sarab. Um, so just keeping an eye on the time, we wanna make sure we allow enough time for the demonstration of the assessment tool. But there are two questions that I think um, you could quickly recover. Um, one is about um, how to implement quality tolerance limits in clinical research. And then the second one is related to any tools that are available that um, would help connect QRM concepts, quality risk management concepts, such as E6R2 uh, specifies that are available in the Transcelerate website. Okay. So starting uh, with the question on uh, tolerance limit, I just wanted to... Um, um, uh, share with the audience that one area from the CTMS framework that uh, sheds light on establishing uh, threshold limits uh, is under issue management as an element. Uh, and there are a number of tools available on the, um, on the Transcelerate website uh, that helps to, um, uh, helps with the 
um, uh, issue escalation um, and, and how to establish that with uh, threshold design. Uh, but the main idea is really uh, making sure with threshold design that issues are, uh, we need to make sure that issues are being categorized to allow for trending. Uh, uh, predefined limits uh, can be uh, established uh, via leveraging the risk management uh, processes in place within the organization. Uh, tolerance limits uh, limits would be different based on your context and in your your organization. Um, issue impact is very important, um, and it requires a cross-functional team to really be able to uh, evaluate that impact and accurately assess it. Um, and and when we establish um, threshold limits, uh, they really help us uh, define what our next steps are, uh, such as uh, being able to proceed because we. Uh, threshold limits were not met, or if they were met, um, you know, perhaps putting together some um, action plans to, uh, to address them. Um, and the next question was about uh, the tools related to QRM. Uh, I also wanted to, to let you know that the, uh, the tool that we are going to be discussing uh, shortly, uh, assessing the CQMS tool, actually has a risk management uh, section and a component uh, to assess risk management as an element of your QMS. So we're going to look into the details of that shortly. There's also the, um, the QMS concept paper that I, that I talked about earlier, which is also available on the Transcelerate website, which uh, uh, provides a little bit more detail on the concept of risk management. And then last but not least, I want to uh, let the audience know that uh, 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 under the element of risk management, there are going to be additional tools uh, published by Transcelerate later on in 2018 uh, that, again, will help with the understanding of risk management as an element and uh, with the implementation um, of the details of the risk management as an element. Great. Thank you very much, Rob. In the interest of time, why don't we turn it over to Dawn to begin the demonstration of the assessment tool. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Saurabh and Heather, for providing that thorough background of the uh, clinical QMS as developed by Transcelerate uh, for companies to utilize. Um, and thank you, everyone, on this call. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's a pleasure uh, to be able to be here on this webinar with you. Um, following the publication of the Transcelerate paper describing the clinical QMS, the QMS Workstream extended our work to create a tool that will allow an organization to assess the performance and the effectiveness of their QMS as designed by them. So what is assessing the QMS? Um, as Heather and Sarab had described earlier, an organization may have elected to fully develop all elements and foundational aspects in line with their objectives and how it's outlined in the CQMS framework, some of the elements or, or some of the elements in part. The tool can be customized to assess the CQMS regardless of how an organization has chosen to develop it to meet their quality objectives. This assessment will provide insight into the performance relative to those quality object objectives, help to identify areas for improvement and any interdependencies, allow an organization to determine if the QMS is performing effectively, and helping them to prioritize and execute continuous improvement activities in a more timely fashion. What assessing the CQMS is not, it is not a measurement of quality for a specific program or trial, and it is not an audit. It gives visibility to the effectiveness of this QMS as a holistic framework for the organization. Next slide, please. So why assess the clinical QMS? This goes back to the foundational aspect of continuous improvement. An organization may be doing work to develop the CQMS framework all or in part, and the assessment will help an organization answer the following questions along the way. Is the clinical QMS working effectively in a manner envisioned by better or best practices in the industry? Remember that the Transcelerate paper recommends best practice for the development and maintenance of an effective clinical QMS. As Heather and Saurabh covered earlier, the framework was designed closely in alignment with other quality management systems, but is intended to be flexible to accommodate the variability we see in clinical development. A best practice in one organization may not be feasible for another, depending on their size, portfolio, or other factors in the internal and external environment. Another question that can be answered is, does the organization have insight into the maturity of its clinical QMS relative to principles commonly viewed as effective within the industry? How developed or underdeveloped a given element may be may also vary depending on the needs and the quality objectives of an organization. 
The tool will provide this information based on a maturity scale that will also be covered shortly in this demonstration. If a given element is not fully developed but meeting a minimum standard so that you have that flexibility, then it would be viewed as effective and continuous improvement efforts may be deferred to allow focus on other elements that your organ organization may choose to focus on. The assessment can help answer how much the culture of quality has been established and if it's interpreted consistently across the organization. It can help you determine if there's a mechanism for continuous improvement and how much or how little you are in a reactive versus proactive mode. And it will help you answer if the QMS you have designed supports a sustained proactive decision-making process within your organization. Next slide, please. As Transcelerate was developing the framework, it did become very clear that what was most foundational to these foundational aspects and elements was how well they were working in concert with each other. Using the analogy of a system of gears, one element may be working completely effectively, but if it's not providing an appropriate output that feeds as an input to another element, the gear system may not function properly. As an example, issue management is a feed or input into risk management through knowledge management. An issue that may have occurred in one program could be a risk that has not yet been identified or occurred in another. If the issue is not communicated properly, it can be incorporated into the risk management necessary for the other program. Knowledge management via that communication of information can assist to ensure the issues are being provided as that input into risk management for all programs in an organization's portfolio. Next slide, please. The elements of the clinical QMS are represented closely by these individual gears intended to work together as a gear system. So if all cogs or teeth in the gears are intact and the gear system um, together will work effectively and efficiently, just as the elements would within the framework. If a cog or tooth in the gear system is damaged or missing, that gear will cause a disruption in the efficient functioning of the gear system. Likewise, if an element in the clinical QMS is underdeveloped, non-existent, working less than optimally, the clinical QMS may not perform as efficiently as intended if all elements were functionally, fun functioning uh, optimally. Having awareness of the interdependencies is the first step and the assessment will provide that information so that the QMS can be developed into a system that works in unison. Next slide, please. The toolkit that was created provides a working aid for organizations to use the assessment process. It contains instructions for how to use the tool as well as working, a working aid to capture and assess the maturity of the foundational aspects and elements and how they are working together. The aid itself contains questions designed directly from the Transcelerate CQMS paper, contextual considerations to ensure accuracy in the results and a maturity rating scale. It's important to note that organizations that have not designed their clinical QMS in alignment with the Transcelerate clinical QMS framework may use this toolkit and working aid. However, the results may not be a true accurate representation of the state of clinical QMS that's being evaluated. Next slide, please. So as stated, and we'll be going through this shortly with the demo, we have instructions for using the working aid, which includes the rating scale. Um, we also have the working aid itself, which will provide a series of questions, contextual considerations um, that are aligned with the development of a clinical QMS against the, the Transcelerate framework. Um, the tool will help you rate the maturity of your organization's clinical QMS. It can actually be used as a baseline to help you determine where you should be, begin um, in the development of your QMS. And that rating scale has been designed um, to assign numerical values to help you in that quanti to help you quantify how well each of those elements match up against the elements described in the conceptual framework. Next slide, please. The tool itself is designed to assess the current state of an organization's clinical QMS against the conceptual framework. So again, you can use this as a baseline. Um, if you've not even begun to, to fully develop or work against the framework, the tool can be the place to start. Utilize the ratings to establish the organization's goal for each element as part of that activity. Identify gaps and or efficiencies as well as interdependencies between those elements. Evaluate the impact um, of the gaps and efficiencies to identify what improvements and enhancements can be made. And it enables the organization to set those priorities for, for which elements or foundational aspects you would like to develop further. Next slide, please. You will note in the instructions that we'll cover in a few minutes that the assessment process itself follows the same uh, Deming continuous improvement cycle as described in the QMS framework. This was done intentionally for consistency. 
So as part of the planning phase, there will be preparations that will take place to begin the assessment. The assessment will be executed. You will check the assessment of those results and based on those results, take action to address the continuous improvement and in the QMS based on the needs of your organization. Next slide, please. The tool does contain a series of 134 questions about each of the foundational aspects and elements as described in the concept, concept paper. For this demonstration, we will walk through selected questions from risk management, issues management, and risk management. Next slide, please. As you perform the assessment, that numerical response will be provided for each question um, using this rating scale um, to assess the maturity and development of the element itself. The maturity scale begins at undeveloped and progresses to a state of developed and continuous improvement based on the formalization of concepts, the level of procedures established and followed, and the level of the culture of quality that exists. Remember the intent is to perform an assessment, not an audit of the overall health of an elements of the elements and subsequently the clinical QMS. The ratings are assigned based on responses provided during interviews and surveys. Evidence to support the responses is not required unless an organization opts to take it to that level of detail. At this time, I'd like to ask to, um, John, if you could switch the presentation over to me so I can show the demonstration on my desktop, that would be great. And if you could please let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, yep. yeah, your screen. Great. So where to begin? Start with the Transcelerate website by going to transceleratebiopharmainc.com. You'll see on the landing page information all about Transcelerate, what we're about, our mission, strategy, and goals, our work, events. This is a great um, link to uh, click onto. We have another event coming up uh, June 28th for eSource. We invite everyone to join us again on that webinar, so please click on the events button and take a look and see what events we are uh, hosting in the near future. Uh, there's knowledge vaults and contact information. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to walk through how you would access the Assessing the Clinical QMS tool. Click on Our Work. Click on Our Work in Clinical Development. On this page, you will see the various um, initiatives, the portfolio of initiatives that Transcelerate is involved in, as well as a, a click to learn more and links to the initiative assets that have been created for each of these. We do invite you to take a look at this page and look through all of the various um, initiatives that are underway with Transcelerate. Uh, again, for the purpose of this de demonstration, I'm going to move uh, to where you would go to access uh, the, the tool. Uh, you'll go to Clinical Quality Management System and click on Initiative Assets. This will take you to a page for the Quality Management System. And as Heather and Sarab had described, you'll be able to click on each of these links to get a little bit more information about each of the elements in the framework and the foundational aspects. If you scroll down further and click on, you'll see the concept paper itself you'll have access to. We do recommend this as a prerequisite before you do conduct an assessment, since the assessment tool has been designed against the paper uh, itself. Issues management tools, clinical knowledge management, as well as assessing the clinical QMS. If you click on that, this will take you to our tool. Uh, it may take a little while to load, so for purpose of this demonstration, I have a preloaded version with some data that's been entered to show you how it can be used. Once you open the tool, you will see um, the landing page here, uh, the first page. You may put your name as the person conducting the assessment and links to what will be at the bottom, um, instructions for the use of the tool, the status overview and your data, and then a, work, uh, a worksheet that will cover each of the foundational aspects and elements that you will test as part of the assessment. Um, those links may also be accessed here. And we also have abbreviations and acronyms and definitions um, to support. Next, I'll click on how to use the toolkit. We will not cover this uh, completely here, uh, given the time uh, limitations that we have. But here is complete instruction booklet that will help you um, determine how to conduct your assessment. This will be different for each organization. But we do provide guidance um, on how to prepare for the assessment, how to determine who should do the assessment. Again, that may depend on your, your organization. It may be a quality unit. It may be a regulatory unit. It may be um, what will need to be work, what needs to be worked best by your organization, as well as what per
participants should be included. Um, it includes for continuous improvement with your management reviews that will take place after the assessment is complete. For purpose of this um, demonstration, I'm now going to jump into, um, if you can bear with me one second here, I won't cover a complete uh, element, but I'd like to show, to cover the interdependencies, um, a question from an element from risk management, an L, uh, issue management, and knowledge management. But to begin, when you open up uh, the, the worksheet for a given element, you'll see at the top the actual statement from the clinical QMS concept paper. Again, that concept paper is providing you the recommendations um, for how to uh, orchestrate and build your clinical QMS framework. So we've taken each of those statements that provide those recommendations and have created questions that will help you determine whether or not you fully developed um, a particular element in that space. Um, you will then, as you're interviewing, either asking questions or surveying um, your participants, you will provide your rating based on that rating scale for development and maturity. An average rating will be calculated and then it will give you a total score, which I'll show shortly when we get to, um, get to the data analysis at the end. Um, in, included with that is contextual considerations. Um, the, the QMS Workstream worked diligently to ensure that if you're in a situation where you're answering questions and really want to get to a more accuracy, a greater level of accuracy with your participants and how they're answering them, these contextual considerations may be used uh, to ensure better accuracy so you're not getting a yes, no answer or something limited um, by your participants. So with that, I'm going to move to question 4.3 and our risk management element um, for the assessment. The organization should pr prospectively define a framework for how it will manage risks effectively and efficiently, including how risk management will be integrated with other activities. For example, in setting the thresholds for issue triage. This is what's recommended in the paper. The questions that have been uh, designed to uh, test the assessment of the, the development of that. Is there a defined process for managing risk? Is the risk management framework set up to interlink with other elements in the clinical QMS? For example, issue management, knowledge management, and to incorporate information from the other sources in managing risk. Is that information gleaned from risk management activities utilized to effectively and efficiently eliminate or decrease risks? So again, you can see the interdependency to the other um, elements that we have in the framework. Uh, you would go proceed to answer these questions with your participants. If you're not um, feeling as though the answer is, is getting to um, enough of the information that's needed to really truly assess the maturity and the development of that, utilize those contextual considerations to dig a little deeper. I'm going to move to an issue management question. And I hope everyone can still see my screen. Yes, okay. Trending and analytics. According to our concept paper, they recommend that an effective issues management framework should foster continuous improvement and enhance risk management that may represent systemic issues or, or risks. Trend analysis is a vital input to risk assessment, for example, providing information on the likelihood of an event occurring. The questions that have been developed are the learnings or findings from issue trending and analytics evaluated or considered as part of the overall continuous improvement activities. Is the information from trending and analytics provided as an input to risk management? Again, you'll rate your, um, have your participants um, provide their answers, rate the development, get your average rating, and again, use those contextual considerations to support accuracy of those results. I'll move over to knowledge management. And I do believe I need to turn this down a little bit so you can see. Question 6.2, a knowledge management framework includes strategies and processes designed to identify, capture, structure, value, leverage, and share the organization's intellectual assets to enhance the clinical development organization's performance and the performance of the clinical QMS elements, including issue management and risk management. So the questions developed are strategies and processes designed to identify, capture, structure, value, leverage, and share intellectual assets incorporated into the organization's knowledge management framework. Are those assets used to enhance the performance of all elements of the clinical QMS? You'll provide the rating from based on the answers, use those contextual considerations, and complete the questions for that uh, element as you complete the assessment. When you've done this for all of those elements and foundational aspects, you'll see there's a page for um, showing all the data that's been provided and a status overview. This is what will help facilitate those management review meetings and where you will learn how your organization or use this information to allow your organization to prioritize those continuous improvement activities. 
So you can see where you may be falling short here with continuous improvement. Um, you know, your organization may decide that with the um, R2, the recent changes, <coughs> excuse me, the recent changes to ICH R2 that you're going to focus on um, ensuring that risk management activities have been developed and maybe focus on your knowledge management activities as a default to ensure that there will be a better commitment to quality throughout the organization, more consistent um, uh, commitment to quality throughout your organization, and to then through that help facilitate those continuous improvement activities. Um, this is a great demonstration of all the interdependencies and based on your, the results of, of the development of your QMS, how you may utilize this information to prioritize uh, what you may want to work on further for continuous improvement. With that, that concludes this demonstration of the tool. Again, you've been provided the instructions on how to access it. I'll stop there. Um, I'll ask Jen to take over the um, the presentation so we can uh, remove the presentation from my screen and ask if there are Thanks, any questions. Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Um, there were a couple of questions coming into the question box, which I've been answering about how to access the tool on the Transcelerate website. Again, if you click on the Transcelerate website under our work, then our work in clinical development, scroll to QMS, and then click on initiative assets and you'll be able to download all of the tools and manuscripts from there. Um, so in the interest of time, uh, why don't we go to the last couple of polling questions? So you can see the first polling question on your screen at this time. Was the demonstration helpful to better understand the CQMS assessment tool and its practical application? Yes, no, or somewhat? All right, great. 77% said yes, 1% said no, and 22% said somewhat. Thank you very much for that, um, that poll, polling answer. And then the next question is, how might you consider using it? Would you use it as is, or would you customize it? Would you use some aspects or customize? Would you have to discuss it internally, or would you have to take a further assessment before you were able to answer that? We know this was a very quick demonstration of a pretty broad tool. All right, great, thank you. It looks like uh, some a variety of, of plans uh, for people to think about using it, discussing it internally, and further assessing it. Uh, so again, you can access the tool and download it and save it to your local your local laptop, so you'll be able to use it um, as you need to and customize it as, if you need to. And then lastly, our last poll question is, are there other topics that you would like to see for any future QMS website webinars? Uh, for instance, would you like to see a webinar on the deeper dives on some of those other QMS concepts that Sarab and Heather and Dawn mentioned, such as issues management, clinical management, uh, clinical knowledge management, or for our upcoming risk management and processes manuscripts? Would you like to see webinars on other QMS tools that are available? Um, or we have other topics such as the differences between QMS, QRM, RBM, or something else? All right, again, a variety of, uh, of interesting topics uh, that the team will definitely take into account as we plan future webinars. And I'll just go back to the questions to see if there's any other questions that we can answer. We have about a minute left. Uh, one question, can we get an unprotected version? Uh, so the version that you download in Excel is, should be unprotected. Uh, there is a lot of programming in there because of those pie charts, uh, but certainly if you wanted to disconnect the pie charts, I think if you just deleted that tab, it, you would be able to customize the questions. Um, and yes, you should be able to unblock the tool uh, so that you can uh, select, the, um, select the dropdowns for each question. If you wanted to type answers in, you would probably have to create new columns uh, or new tabs in the tool. 
uh, I don't have an immediate answer on how to unblock the tool so you can type answers into it. So thank you for the questions, everyone. Hopefully we were able to provide you with an overview of our QMS uh, manuscripts and tools. And uh, please stay tuned on the Transcelerate events website uh, for future webinars uh, on additional QMS topics. And we will be sending the slides out shortly to everyone who dialed in today. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you to our, our panelists very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.